In this exercise, we apply the landauer bütika formalism to a whole bar in which a top gate, shown in green, selectively reflects edge channels. The top gate reduces the charge carrier density under it, and so reduces the effective filling factor. Here we assume that we have two non-degenerate modes transmitted along the edge in the bulk of the sample, and that only one mode is transmitted in the region of the top gate. We start by writing down the transmission matrix within landauer bütika formalism, where we have the vector of currents equal to the conductance quantum times the transmi transmission matrix times the vector of voltages at each contact. So we assume that we inject a current I into contact 1, and that at contact 4 the current I is leaving, so that here we write minus I, and we assume that the four other contacts do not carry any currents. Now to find the elements of the transmission matrix, we count how many modes are transmitted from each contact and how many modes are transmitted from other contacts into the contacts we are con contact we are considering. So at contact 1, we have two modes leaving and two are transmitted from contact 6. Contact 2 so far it's two modes and two are incoming from contact one. Now at contact three the situation is different because one mode transmitted from contact two is reflected into contact six. So that only one mode is incoming from two and you also have one incoming from five and two leaving. So minus one, two, uh, minus one, two, and from 5 also, a mode incoming. At 4 we have 2 incoming, 2 leaving. At 5, it's similar to 4. And as I said before, we have one transmitted from 2 to 6, also one from 5 and 2 leaving. Now we have a complete transmission matrix and give this gives us a system of equation that uh, allows us to compute any voltage difference in the sample. So Let's write down a few relations which will be useful to calculate whole voltages, longitudinal voltages, and the two terminal voltage. So the two terminal resistance is um, the one computed with the voltage between the contacts that carry the current. So looking at the system, from the second row, we see that 0 is equal to minus 2 times V1 plus 2 times V2, so V1 and V2 are equal. So for A, we have V1 equal V2, and similarly V4 and V5 are equal if you look at this row. Now, row number 3 tells us that 0 is equal to minus 1 times V2 plus 2 times V3 minus 1 times V5. And the same with V6 replacing V3. So we write this down as 2V3 equal to V2 plus V5. And this is also equal to 2v6. We also obtain the relations between current and voltages from row 1 and row number 4. 
where we find that i is equal to 2 is square over h so 2 and 2 is square over h and we have here v1 minus v6 and taking into account this minus sign here we also have v3 minus v4 so I said v1 minus v6 and this is also equal to 2 e square over h v3 minus v4 and that's it with this system we can calculate all the interesting voltages we start by calculating the two terminal resistance so for that we need v1 minus v4 now we want to use one of those equations and for this we see that we can replace v4 by v5 and use this equation here to replace v5 by v2 and v6 so that we obtain v1 minus 2v6 plus v2 and realizing that, that v1 and v2 is equal we see that this is simply 2 times v1 minus v6 which appears here so that we can immediately read the resistance R2 terminal so the resistance that we have if we pass current between contacts 1 and 4 and measure the voltage drop between 1 and 4 it's V1 minus V4 over I and this is simply H over E squared as can be read from here the whole voltages are between 2 and 6 and the pair 3 and 5 so V2 and V6 we can obtain it by replacing V2 by V1 and looking here and V3 minus V5 uh, we replace V5 by V4 and look here so from here we realize that the two voltage differences are equal and that the resistance that we will get between the two pairs is the same is equal to h over 2 e square now finally we look at the longitudinal resistances so we consider v2 minus v3 and here we replace v2 by v1 and we also note that v3 and v6 are equal and this quantity we know it similarly v6 minus v5 here we replace v6 by v3 and v5 by v4 so that we are here again we see that the two longitudinal resistances are the same and equal to h over 2 e squared so before commenting on the results let's solve the case where the gate is not in the middle but at contact 4 So again we write down the transmission matrix
So as before, current is injected into one and leaves four. No current in the other contacts. And again, we count the modes. So at one, we have the same situation as before. Two, we have also two leaving, two incoming from one. At three, we also have two leaving, two coming from two. Now at four, the situation is different as we have one reflected back so that only one mode is leaving contact four and one is incoming from three. No contact five, we have one mode transmitted from four and also one from three and two leaving. And at six, we have two from five and two leaving. So now we will have slightly different equations. Let's also write down a few useful ones. So now looking at those two rows, we see that V1 is equal to V2 and also equal to V3. So this is the case B. I said V1 equal V2 equal V3. And here we read that V6 is equal to V5. Here we have the relation 0 equal v5 minus v3 minus v4, uh, 2 times v5. And now the rows involving the current gives us i equal to so here we have 2 e square over h times v1 minus v6. And also 1 e square over h times v3 minus v4. With that system of equation, we can calculate the two terminal resistance. So we consider V1 minus V4. V1 is equal to V3. And looking here, we read the resistance h over e square. Now the longitudinal resistance 6 minus 5, 2 minus 3 is 0 because the voltages are the same. So we have the same longitudinal resistance at both, which is zero. And for the whole resistance, V3 minus V5, we see that 
it is equal to v1 minus v6, which lets us use this equation. But it is also equal to v2, since v1, v3, and v2 are equal, minus v6, which is the other whole resistance. So again, the two are equal. And we see a whole resistance of h over 2 squared. Now, let's go back to case A, where we also want now to calculate the diagonal voltages between 2 and 5, 3 and 6. So now we look again at the equations that we have here, and we continue. V2 minus V5. This is the same as V1 minus V4. And this we already know, we have calculated it to find out the two terminal resistance. So we conclude that the diagonal resistance between 2 and 5 is equal to the two terminal resistance is h over e squared. Now the other diagonal, v3 minus v6, here we see that it is zero, v3 is equal to v6, so that the resistance measured across the other diagonal is zero. Let's comment on what we have observed. So in both cases, we see that the whole voltage is the same as the one that one has if no gate is present, the case that has been treated in the lecture, where for filling factor 2, you expect the whole voltage of h over 2 is square. In the case where the gate reflects the innermost channel in the middle of the whole bar, we have a finite and non-zero longitudinal resistance, whereas in the case where there is no gate, our longitudinal is zero. And the two terminal resistance is the one associated with one perfectly transmitting channel, h over e square. In the case where the gate affects only contact four, the longitudinal resistance is also zero. But for the two terminal resistance, we find the same as in this case, h over e squared. In order to get a better feeling for where those values come from, we will, in the second part of the solution, treat uh, the case where we have an arbitrary number n maximum of modes in the bulk and n minimum transmitted under the top gate. At first, let's look at the result for the two diagonals. They are not equal. While this might be surprising, there is in fact no symmetry due to the chirality of the edge channels. The voltage drop between 2 and 5 is the sum of the longitudinal resistance plus the whole resistance. But if you consider this diagonal, you add the whole resistance and you subtract the longitudinal resistance so that in fact you do not expect necessarily the same value. 